The class of 2023 is not over, not even by a long shot, but there are more known than unknown things at this point, and recruiting is never over for any class. So today on the BWI Daily Edition, we are taking a look at the class of 2024. Ryan Snyder, our recruiting insider, is going to join me, and we are going to set the stage for 2024 so you know the names and players and positions going into the next cycle. Let's get to it on the BWI Daily Edition. Back here on the BWI Daily Edition, Ryan Snyder, our recruiting insider. It's been a while. How you doing? Doing good, man. I'm I'm in the new house here. It's still probably a little echoey, so apologize, guys. I added a picture behind me, if you can see that. So <laughs> yeah. I think if I just add one picture every time we do a podcast, we should be good by the time the season starts. But uh, I'll figure it out in here. And if not, then the wife's getting tossed down to the basement, and we're moving up to the premium office. So we'll figure it out here. I'll make sure the audio is good for you guys here soon. But uh, good to be back. And Good, good time to talk 2024, man, because obviously, like you said, 2023, not far from finished, but uh, this season and, and the visitors that we're talking about primarily, you know, for, for that Ohio State game, for that whiteout game, for these big games coming up in the months ahead, it's going gonna, it's gonna to focus on 2024. So this is a good time to, to really look at this class and, and see who's emerging. A whole new reason to be anxious or excited about the future of Penn State football as we look ahead at 2024 and some big names on the list. You may know some of them because we have talked about them on the BWI Daily Edition when Ryan comes on or, of course, on the recruiting show where you can see him every Tuesday with Greg Pickle. So some of these are going to be reviewed, but we're going to give you a long list of the players. And then we'll highlight a couple here and there that uh, are either interesting or we think are very important to the class. So do you want to jump right in? You want to get to it and give some of the names out? Yeah, there's no place better to start than quarterback, man. I mean, yeah. this is uh, the the premium position we all talk about. And uh, I, I think these are the five guys uh, or excuse me, six guys right now uh, that make the most sense at the quarterback position. Now, of course, uh, I'm sure more offers will go out with time and, and somebody not on this list is going to emerge. It always does when you're trying to right. talk about a class that doesn't sign for what is it? Another 16, 15 months, something like that. But when I look down this list at the moment, uh, Jaden Davis is, of course, the, the top guy that I think everybody's after. I think most Penn State fans uh, are familiar with Jaden by now. But to me, I mean, I, I just feel like Penn State's fringe top five at best with him. I just, mm -hmm. I just see a few other schools that make more sense. The good news for Penn State is that there's a player like Jaden Bradford still available, players like Michael Van Buren, who have both consistently been visiting. Uh, Jaden mm -hmm. Bradford, of course, was just here for the Last Bash Barbecue uh, this past weekend. That was his third visit to Penn State overall. Uh, I will say Jaden Davis has been to Penn State three times, but when you look at Jaden Davis's list, I mean, he's been everywhere multiple times. I mean, he visits yeah. all over the country constantly. I mean, every weekend, I feel like he gets a chance. He's, he's going on the road. So, uh, yes, it's positive that he's been here three times, but if you just look at, I mean, he's been to Georgia like six times. There's the Michigan seems to really be emerging. There's, there's just some schools that make more sense there. Uh, to go back to where I was talking about though, of course, Michael Van Buren's been here twice already. The, the St. Francis quarterback, uh, KJ Jackson is a name that we really probably aren't, haven't been talking about enough here in recent yeah. weeks. And we just saw him, came, uh, last Friday right. when he was here for Penn state's final prospect camp of the, uh, of the summer, good looking prospect, big physical kid. Mm -hmm. the, the thing with the thing with KJ compared to like Jaden Bradford, for example, which is just not as good of an athlete. I mean, good athlete, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, but he's 6'3", 215. Yep. Cer certainly more of a Drew Aller kind of shade, right? I mean, he can run, but he's running like a high 4'8", 4'9", 5'0", kind of kind of 40s where, you know, some of these other guys are more in the 4'7", kind of range, you know, just a, just a little bit faster, a little more agile. So getting a feel for what Yurchich wants there uh, is is kind of something we'll just kind of see with time. Yeah. If I had my pick right now, or what I think would be Penn State's board, I, I think Jaden Bradford is the top guy. I mean, yes, Jaden Davis probably the top guy, but it's kind of like Dante Moore last year, right? I mean, yeah, we're right. talking about Dante Moore as the top guy the whole time, but deep down, I never really thought Dante Moore was coming here, and I don't really think that for Jaden Davis either. Uh, I yeah. think Jaden Bradford, He's at IMG Academy now, so he's going to get more looks. Uh, and yep. he hasn't played at IMG yet. This will be his first season there. Uh, I think he'll be the starter. There's one or two other guys there. But Jaden is lining up to be the starter there. How he performs this season will be massive. Because if he crushes it, and most guys do crush it at IMG, I right. expect a flood of schools to, to come calling. But right now, man, I mean, 
Jaden's been to South Carolina like six or so times. There's a couple other schools he's been consistently visiting, but but Penn State makes a lot of sense for Jaden Bradford, and uh, the only time will really tell. But uh, yep. right now, Jaden's kind of the guy I have circled. Jaden Bradford, the 40th overall player in the nation in the class of 2024, according to On3, fifth quarterback and eighth player in the state of Florida now uh, as he's moved down to IMG Academy. But even in the consensus ranking, still in the same area, so a high-level prospect. Another opportunity for Penn State to get a, a borderline five-star player at the most important position in football. And I know you just said it makes a lot of sense for him, and uh, you know, if he does blow up or did the odds decrease, but is Penn State still have they done enough? Do you think to keep a foothold in that conversation with him seems to have a great relationship based on your last conversation with him? Yeah, well, getting him here for the last batch was absolutely massive because, again, his family's from South Carolina. He's now in Florida at IMG. And the, there's one thing if you follow IMG prospects, it's very hard for them to just say, hey, screw it. I'm gonna go up to this game this weekend. I'm gonna be here the next weekend. That doesn't really work that way when you go to IMG. Right. And it's the same in the spring, too. When you're away from your family, uh, of course, IMG goes on spring break. And, and when they do that, it's, it's an opportunity for guys to visit. But it just kind of depends on where the calendar falls often. So, so getting him back for the last bash was massive. Because I think there's a real chance that Jaden Bradford doesn't return to Penn State until late spring. Maybe even when official visits start again. So they had to get him back here, I felt like, to, to really make sure that Penn State stayed in his ear. And, and, of course, they were able to do that. So that's big. Now, of course, I will say, too, Michael Van Buren, I don't want to overlook uh, the St. Francis prospect. Uh, he, he's another top guy who uh, – top 100 player in the on three consensus and, and another guy who uh, I expect Mike Yurchis to go out for – go all out for. Of course, mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's in Baltimore, so it's a lot easier for him to get here. Right. I could definitely see Van Buren visiting for, you know, definitely the whiteout game, maybe the Ohio State game. I, I wouldn't be shocked at all if he's able to get here a few times. And and with more visits, of course, becomes uh, it, you get a better vibe, right? It, yeah. You get a better understanding for that interest. So Van Buren, Bradford, they make a lot of sense. K.J. Jackson, I think, has a lot of interest in Penn State as well. Uh, and I don't want to overlook him. I, I, I Before we move on, Cook, I do want to mention Samaj Jones, Julian Sayan. Saying, of course, is one of the elite quarterbacks in the country. He was here mm -hmm. for a quick visit earlier this summer. His brother plays at Penn. I think that's really why he was here. He was out to see his brother, stop by the school, but maybe he'll get back on campus one more time. I just don't. I don't see that happening. And this Samaj Jones, I don't want to overlook the the St. Joseph's Prep prospect. He did get an offer from Penn State after camping in June. Uh, but right now, I just see a couple other guys that 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 feel like that's kind of where the, the staff is focused the most at the moment. But Samaj could certainly be a guy we're talking about here in the, in the weeks and months ahead. Yeah, I think J.J. Cole is a good example of this. You mentioned guys that come out of nowhere to become a, a, pro, a prospect, not just for Penn State, but for a lot of schools. How much does how much does the quarterback ranking or how much does that change from junior to senior season uh, and and, you know, where we are now with these players heading into uh, their junior season, how much movement is there? Or is this, uh, do you feel like we have enough data to know that we, uh, we rank these guys appropriately and there's not as much change over time? Uh, obviously that's, that's a little more of a question for Charles power. What I would right. say is that those top guys who are top guys right now, they're probably going to stay there. I can gotcha. see a guy like KJ Jackson, you know, he's like like 300 or so in the country, high three star, but you know, somebody who, uh, could, I, I see him as likely to move up more than like a Jaden Bradford dropping the you know, outside the top 300 or low 200, something like that, right? Gotcha. I mean, okay. Jaden Bradford has put – now, of course, if he goes to IMG and IMG has a terrible season and all this stuff, maybe that changes. But I don't see that happening, right? It's IMG, right. and he should have success there. So, uh, I, like I said, if those top guys are up there right now, uh, they they should say, I would think, like top 100 or so. It's, it's more so those three-star guys that – our staff hasn't been able to get uh, as many looks at, especially with more camps and all that stuff to come. Uh, they make the most sense for for moving up in the rankings. You always handle my tough questions that are out of left field so well. I, I try. appreciate that about You've you. You've given me a lot of opportunities. Thank you, T. Frank, <laughs> for that. Uh, let's go to running back. The obvious name here is Quinton Martin. Everyone who follows this show has heard the name a bunch. You've uh, given him some serious accolades. Uh, we can start there, but uh, is there anything in the name? I'm always the guy that's interested in like the under-the-radar stuff, but take us through this list of importance and likelihood and all that stuff. 
Yeah, there's no doubt. Quentin Martin is number one on this board. He's number one offensive board. He's number one probably overall for 2024. Uh, this is a five-star player who, if you followed us, we've been gushing about for a long time. He is an incredibly important prospect. You could argue that if he even added the 2023 guys into the mix, that he's still probably a top five most yeah. important prospect for Penn State right now. Uh, and has been for months now. Uh, so that, that that's kind of we're, – we're talking about a player who – you know, if you look over the last, I mean, I've talked about this a couple of times. I, I think he's the best player to come out of PA since Michael Parsons. So if you just look over the last handful of years of, of Pennsylvania players, there aren't too many guys that are more important than Penn State than Quentin Martin. So the, the good news there is Penn, Penn State has hosted Quentin six times now, going back to last year's Lash Bash. Uh, he visited them for two games this season, came back in January. April, and then now the last rash. So that's that's a great sign. Six visits, of course. Uh, he's been at a handful of other schools, and, and and that's really what we need to see from Quinn. We need to see what other schools are going to emerge as, as Penn State's competition here. We know, I feel pretty confident saying Penn State's going to be top five, probably top yeah. three with him, and, and they'll probably be the school that he compares a lot of other schools to. Uh, yeah. But until we get a better feel for who the competition is and how hard they're going to push and, you know, do the Alabamas and the Georges and, and you know, those, right. those premier programs come calling – uh, that's that's what we need to figure out still. Uh, as far as the guys down the list a little bit, uh, Jordan Lyle, I'm learning more and more about the St. Thomas Aquinas prospect. He was just here, of course, for the Lash Bash this past weekend. Jordan also came for the Blue-White game. And, man, really enjoyed my talk with him. I just had an interview on him earlier this week. Great kid. Uh, just really kind of gets the whole picture, right? It's not it's not just all ball and just cares about that stuff. He really cares about the relationships, the off the field image, all that kind of stuff. Really, just this is a kid who fits Penn State without a yeah. doubt in my mind. So, the the J1 Cider ties to South Florida, great start, especially with him being a running back. You have Conrad mm -hmm. Hussey, King Mac committed the same school. Can, Another can I, check. Can I Go ahead. Jump in here for just one second. Is Go. that a St. Thomas Aquinas kind of the school in general? Following King Mac, I've noticed some of those things and following Conrad Hussey about just kind of the way those guys represent themselves either online or the vibe you get from the school. Is that a really good match that is developed between what Penn State represents and St. Thomas or is it these individual players and how are you reading that developing relationship? Another left field question, T. Frank. I don't know, T. Frank. I don't know the <laughs> guys right. on St. Thomas Aquinas to to give you an overview of the eighty plus players on that team. I yeah. would say that yes, King Mac, Conrad Hussey, they have they have great image. You know, I get that yeah. vibe from them, uh, and I get that vibe from Jordan Lyle. But I'd be lying if I said I really knew all the I, other you, guys on that on that program. You triggered me because you said that, and then I was like, okay, mm -hmm. so we're three for three of St. Thomas Aquinas guys that are that fit Penn State really well and have that same profile. So I, it's it was just an interesting, sure, out of left field question. But yeah, please continue right. talking about Jordan Lyle and the <laughs> uh, and the rest of the running back room. But anyway, with, with Jordan, I, I do think he's going to be a pretty important prospect for Penn State. Uh, he's only been to Penn State so far, and that's that's rare, right? We got a Fort mm -hmm. Lauderdale player who should be – I mean, right now, on three has him as a 19th-ranked running back. I mean, he should be uh, – I, I think he's going to be – I mean, he's in 89 at on three. So he's mm -hmm. right on the on the fringe of being a four-star player. That's just really – that's something we don't see all the time. A, a kid from South Florida, and his only two visits so far have been all the way up here to Penn State. So I, th I thought it was just a great sign that he got him back for the last batch because there's a lot of opportunities for him to visit schools, uh, for him to come back right away. Uh, some, something to keep an eye on down the road. Uh, but, of course, there's a bunch of other guys, too. I think Sam Williams-Dixon is going to be a player we're talking about a good bit. He came to Penn State's camp uh, in June and had a very strong performance. Uh, certainly was the guy who stood out to me the most that night. Sam Piloff, the linebacker prospect from Wisconsin, who was also there. Uh, those guys were, you know, when you were watching them, they're like, okay, they, these are these are offeree kind of guys and and both walked away with offers that night. So I think Sam Williams-Dixon makes a lot of sense. Uh, DeJuan Williams uh, from St. Francis just came up this past weekend for the last batch. I need to catch up with him a bit more and kind of get a better feel for him. And then you've seen Willis too, uh, Willis, excuse me, uh, from St. Joseph's Regional in New Jersey. Another guy who's been here, I think, at least once. I believe you seen was up for the blue-white game. I, or no, actually, I think it was the weekend before, uh, on April 15th or so. So a couple guys there that really – like I, this is a class where I could see Penn State taking two. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, they had uh, – you know, they just had Sam Singleton up this past weekend. So maybe 2023 they'll take two. But when I look at the – of course, Quentin Martin, that you take no matter what. Uh, right kind of situation but when i look at the sam williams dixons when i look at the jordan lyles you've seen wills a couple other guys too uh 
it, it makes sense that Penn State could, could get two in this class. So good running back class to start here, uh, but there's certainly a, a king in this class, and it's not just a running back. It's the whole class overall uh, in Quentin Martin. You beat me to the punch. I was gonna, I was gonna jokingly say, "How many running backs are we taking?" But you, you nailed it. So no, Makes no sense. follow ups. <laughs> I, no does. more. Okay, the, no more asking positionally how many for twenty twenty four because I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that <laughs> seven times between oh, now yeah. and then, and uh, I'm gonna get asked about it all the time, and I'm gonna tell you that I don't think even James Franklin could give you that answer right now uh, in the transfer portal era. It's just, it's just impossible to track. Yeah, and as you pointed out, they have exactly one commit. So there's plenty of room and flexibility for everything to happen in this class. Uh, by the way, just so you know, we're doing just the offense today. And we're going to do later in the month the defense. And we're going to take a mm -hmm. look at the defensive side of the ball and the players on that side. So if we don't get to one of your favorite players or somebody you're super interested in, it's because we're taking a deep dive here and giving you the list of the, the names to know just on the offensive side. And to that note, a big list here wide receiver it's a it's always a hot topic when you look at the uh impact of players at this position and of course the talent in the region usually is pretty good like you can find area players that are that are standouts in the area this list what stands out to you uh the, i would say the two guys the the pennsylvania class is pretty good with rico scott tysier denmark I think Peter Gonzalez is another pretty impressive player. Peter's coming off an injury that he sustained in early, I think it was like February, January. I think it was basketball season. He's going to miss about half of Pittsburgh Central Catholic season now. Uh, but how he responds from that injury will, will determine a lot on how hard Penn State pushes and how a lot of other schools push. But mm -hmm. uh, everything, what we saw from him previously, uh, and then you know, character-wise, all that stuff, Peter Gonzalez makes a lot of sense. So there are three quality guys uh, in Pennsylvania that make a lot of sense for Penn State. Uh, of course, Tysier Denmark, Rico Scott, those are the two four-star you know, top 300 kind of players uh, that I expect Penn State to really push hard for. Tysier has been here, I believe it was four times now, and same with Rico. They've, they've both consistently been coming up. Uh, I don't know, if I say Rico's from Bishop McDevitt, which of course is Harrisburg, mm -hmm. which, uh, I mean, Harrisburg's always been a, a really good area for Penn State, right? I mean, they get yep. the vast majority of top players from there. So Rico's going to be a pretty important prospect from that perspective. Uh, with Ty Sear, who of course is from Roman Catholic, uh, Alabama, Ohio State, those feel like the schools that Penn State's going to have to really fight for. That's really early on, of course, but uh, whenever Alabama and Ohio State have your interest early on, uh, they usually don't lose it, I guess you right. know, the best way to put it. So uh, I know he has gone to Georgia as well. I believe Texas A&M hosted him. I think those both of those were back in March. And he did uh, – I will I will note that uh, Ty Sear did go to Notre Dame and oh, Oregon, I believe it was, uh, in what, the last week or so. That's why actually yeah. – I mean, he, he was supposed to come to Lash Bash, didn't make it. Mm -hmm. uh, he did travel across the entire country, so I guess we can give him a little bit of a break for that one. Yeah. But uh, – So I'll – yeah. I'll just take a hazard to guess. If Ohio State and Alabama are interested in you and your receiver, it means you're really, really fast, right? It's a good place to start. Yeah, I don't yeah. have – I don't believe we have actual testing time. Like, Ty Sears never tested with Penn State. He's done the seven-on-seven seven camp. Uh, I haven't ran into specific 40 times, but uh, just watch the film, guys. I mean, yeah. he's one of the top players to come out of Philly uh, in, the, in the last couple of years, and Philly's been producing a lot of guys. So, uh, Ty Sear will be an incredibly important recruit for Penn State – and like I said, Rico Scott as well. They're, they're both uh, really clearly. I, I kind of get the impression they're the top two guys right now. Well, actually, let me say this: they're the top two guys in Pennsylvania, without a doubt. There yeah. is one other guy I really want to mention in Keelan Adams. He's uh, at a Green Run, Virginia Beach area. Penn State's trying to get a, a better foot in the door in that Tidewater region. Uh, I think Anthony Poindexter is now kind of overseeing that area, which is great. Of course, uh, Dex is respected all throughout Virginia, so that's a positive sign. And Keelan did just make it up for the Lash Bash this past weekend. I need to catch up with him still, so I don't want to say too much as far as where his interest is at. But I just know from speaking with people, uh, whenever I'm asking about the top receivers, uh, Keelan Adams always comes up. He's going to be yeah. a really important prospect as well. This is a class that I think is very important because we talk about the class of 2023 and some of the misses, and I, I understand there's still a lot of runway left. There's still a lot of time for Penn State to recover from some of the things that happened with uh, this summer, the receiver position. But when you talk about you can't lose an inch, you can't fall back, you can't lose a day to your competition, not having the receivers you wanted in the class of 2023, at least as of now, as a recording, 
that is an issue, especially when you're mm -hmm. playing the game the way you do and you're going up against the teams that you're going up against. You need to have that level of athleticism and skill. You cannot go two straight years or else you're back to where you were heading into 2021. This is, an I, I think, just right off the bat right now, from a recruiting standpoint, irrespective of the portal, this class getting at least one of these guys that you mentioned, if not two, is critically important to Penn State at the receiver position to keep up the arms race. And the reason I mentioned Ohio State and Alabama and wanting speed is those programs fo focus on elite speed, getting them into the offense, and creating those explosive plays that Penn State is after. These are the kind of athletes you need to nail if you want to play that way. So that's, For sure. I think, a very important point about this class if things remain the way they are in 2023. For sure. Uh, before we move on to tight end, Olan, I do want to say, I mean, this is a deep board. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I didn't, I mean, I, somehow I didn't even mention David Washington from St. Joseph's Prep. I mean, there's, there's, mm -hmm. there's like a David Raymond too, uh, from, is it Raymond, Raymond, I forget, I, Brand, or Brandon, I said, excuse me. Uh, if Brandon, if I mispronounce your last name, I apologize for watching this, but uh, the, both St. Joseph Prep uh, wide receivers are really good players too that, that Penn State's after. But this is a deep board. I mean, Tay Johnson mm -hmm. is a top 100 player from Indiana who just came out here this past week. And Makai White uh, from Virginia has been here four times already. Uh, Mylon Graham, another another player from Indiana who just came out this past weekend. Uh, Chaz Wiggins is another one. I mean, there's there's a lot of guys here uh, who make a lot of sense. Micah Gilbert is a top, is a pretty good prospect from North Carolina. Uh, Alex Alex Taylor. I mean, they would love to get Alex Taylor up here more. Another really good North Carolina prospect. So th this is a deep board, but wide receiver is always mm -hmm. a deep board. I mean, this yeah. is one of the positions where you can find three star sleepers who uh, should rank up there with the best one. I mean, Ezeed Haynes is, is a yep. pretty good example. Of course, now he's now he's committed to Georgia, but uh, they they will be fine. Uh, there, there's plenty of talent in the region. They should land one or two of them, but. You're right. Uh, they need to land a tie here, Denmark. You know, the, uh, the other player they would love, really highly ranked. We, he's committed to Michigan State now. It's Nick Marsh uh, out of Michigan. I mean, they, if there was maybe one receiver that they like more than anybody in this class, I would think it might be Nick Marsh, mm -hmm. uh, who, uh, you know, like I said, is committed to Michigan State. Of course, they'll stay on him. But pretty pretty good. Uh, they, got, they got their foot in the door with a lot of top guys. And uh, we'll, we'll see how things uh, work out here in the weeks and months ahead. Yeah, that's going to be an important uh, position to shake out. But one position that has been rock solid in recruiting uh, from Tyler, uh, Tyler Bowen uh, to Ty Howell has been tight end. And there's another mm -hmm. great prospect from what I've seen and read from you, Brady Priestcorn. Um, it's a short list here. So take us through these guys and take us through what the tight end position represents in 2024. Yeah, I mean, I, I just feel like Brady Priestcorn and Hogan Hansen are they are clearly at the top. And then there's a few other guys that make sense. Uh, but no doubt about my mind, Brady Prescorn is their top uh, tight end prospect in this class. He's been to Penn State, I believe, three times now. Came in January, which is when he got an offer. Came in the end of March, I believe, to watch a spring practice. And then came to camp with the staff and was actually on campus for two days, uh, June 16th to the 17th, I believe it was. So those are all great signs. Uh, Brady has been, I mean, pretty much ever since Brady came for that first camp, uh, or excuse me, that first junior day, got an offer. I mean, he has been their top guy pretty much the entire time now. So I, I would expect Penn State to push really hard for him. Michigan State's also in the mix. They've hosted him a few times. Uh, Michigan has got him on campus twice. I believe Notre Dame as well. He is a native of Michigan. Rochester is his hometown. So I'll be curious to see how things go there. But really, I mean, I, I, I think Penn State's production on the field this year uh, is, something that, is something to keep an eye on. I mean, they, they mm -hmm. have been very good. They've recruited it really well. Uh, they need. They took a little bit of a step back next year. If they can get back to – you know, either Theo goes off or Strange or somebody else, uh, it should only help uh, in this recruitment. And, uh, you know, I, I do personally, I do kind of expect those guys to take a step forward this year. We're, only time will tell. But I think it'll work well for Brady. Uh, I do want to mention uh, as well Hogan Hansen, who was a player we really haven't talked about a ton. He's from all the way out in Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, Penn State was trying to get him on campus really all summer, wasn't able to make the trip. Uh, but he is a four-star prospect in the on three consensus and another guy that I know Ty Howell is building a pretty strong relationship with uh, Washington, Oregon, a couple other schools. Michigan is offered. Uh, there's a handful of others, but don't be shocked if he comes. A bunch of good like Big the, Ten schools out there. <laughs> Washington right, and right. Oregon, great Big Ten schools. <laughs> oh, I got it. I, I was confused there for a second, but you got me there. Um, yeah, anyway, I, I don't, just don't be surprised if he comes for 
uh, whiteout game or something like that. I mean, uh, of course, if they get Brady committed, maybe things will change. Uh, they have multiple tight ends in this class. I doubt they would need multiple in the next. But uh, Brady, Prescore, and Hogan Hanson, they are clearly the one two right now in my eyes. And, and others may emerge with time. But really, it feels like the vast majority of the stats focus is on Brady, Prescore. BWI Daily Edition here on a Friday. We're discussing the offensive players to know in the class of 2024. I'm Thomas Frank Carr. That's Ryan Snyder, Recruiting Insider. I don't know if you need to reset anymore on podcasts because if you started listening, you you know all that stuff. That's a it's an old radio thing. Anyway, Ryan and I are discussing, uh, and I, I'm just I'm taking a breath here, really, before we dive into probably outside the quarterback, the most anxiety inducing position for Penn state fans, especially ones that are subscribed to blue white illustrated uh, the offensive line and specifically the tackle position, which we have here, I believe is here we go. The offensive tackle position, they got out of order. So uh, Ryan, take us through the next crop of offensive linemen that, that uh, Phil Trout one is going to try to recruit to play tackle at Penn state. For sure. Uh, Peter Jones is pretty damn important out of Malvern Prep. Whether Peter is truly a, a tackle down the road or more of an interior guy, it's something I got to get a better feel for. He is listed as a tackle for now, and Peter's certainly a guy that I want to go watch play this year and, and just kind of see him up close a bit more. I've seen him at a camp, uh, I don't know, I think it was like two years ago maybe, but I, I just I seem to get a get a better feel for where Peter uh, projects long term. But there's no doubt that he's a top prospect for them. He's one of the most important players in this class. Uh, we have him as a top 300 player. The consensus has him as high as number 132. And uh, this feels like a Penn State Notre Dame battle. Uh, he did just make it to both schools this past weekend or this past week. Uh, so th that's a positive sign. And uh, we'll see uh, how it shakes out. I mean, I, I know a few coworkers of mine feel like Notre Dame is going to be the school there. Penn State feels good as well. So it's, I don't want to, I don't want to, say anyone's the favorite rare because I, I really don't know i feel like either school could get him but there are certainly people in south bend who feel good about uh, notre dame's chances with peter a uh, couple other guys that I mentioned deontay armstrong just got an offer from penn state this yep. past weekend yep. really good workout at camp i mean t frank yep. i know you were there with me anything yep. kind of stand out to you about uh, deontay he's cut uh he mm -hmm. is super physically impressive you know he was standing and, and worked a lot with cooper cousins i think during the day and just watching them together, he's not the uh, technician that Cooper is, uh, but he is physically impressive. And, and watching him in his stance, and he's got everything you want from an offensive lineman because he's got that height. He's six six, but he gets into a great stance. And I think once he starts working on some of his, uh, you know, his technique and his footwork, and all of those athletic traits are just going to blossom. But as far as being an athlete, oh, he was super fun to watch. Just watching him move was was cool. Okay. You watched him more than I did. I, I think I, all I did was watch Jackson Smollett like, the entire time at that camp. So I appreciate yeah. you watching other people. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I mean, th there's a, there's a few other guys here. I think like you have to mention Kevin Haywood is is another guy that makes a lot of sense. We have him at six seven two eighty right now, uh, out of Archbishop Wood. He's another guy I'll probably go watch at some point this season. Uh, he's talked about his sister going to Penn State, about how Penn State's a school he grew up watching. I mean, there are a lot of things there right now that think. Uh, Kevin Haywood should be a nitly line in that 2024 class. Uh, ben Roebuck, of course, from St. St. Edwards, I think is another mm -hmm. player that Penn State would really like to to get on campus, maybe a little bit more, get a better uh, get a better foot in the door there. I, I I feel like he'll visit a little bit more, but I, I don't feel like that's trending for Penn State at the moment. Uh, Fletcher Westfall, I think Penn State likes him a lot. I think they just they I think in a couple of weeks, maybe halfway through the season, I'll have a better feel for where Fletcher's at. On Penn State's board, he came up, tested really young at a young age, uh, but they just they just want to get a little more film on him. So we'll see how mm -hmm. that uh, progresses. Nair Daniels came up for one of Penn State's camp in the beginning of the summer. He's a true six seven three forty eight player. I mean, massive, Ooh, massive yeah. player. So want to get a feel for where he's at. So I see a lot of guys that I know Penn State likes a lot, but of course, with, with this being such an important position, I really get the impression that once we get to late October, maybe into the playoffs. Uh, get get a little more film. I'll have mm -hmm. a better feel for how that board kind of stacks up. But Peter Jones, without a doubt, is going to be a top guy. Deontay Armstrong came up to camp, crushed it. He's going to he's you know certainly moving up the board. Kevin yeah. Haywood too is camp now multiple times. Yeah, those three. I feel he's one I saw as well. Uh, he is. Uh, you talked about. Uh, I forget who you were talking about being a legit six seven. Kevin Kevin Haywood is a mm -hmm. legit six seven. Like uh, he's got 
draft horse legs. He is everything you want in an offensive lineman. He was very young and very raw looking when I saw him in person, but wow, that was the, the another one of those guys that stood out literally and, and figuratively at camp because he was so much bigger than the other players. And when you see, and Ryan, you know this, when you see a, a legitimate tackle prospect, they're hard to miss because there's mm -hmm. a lot of guys that are offensive linemen and maybe they're big kids with a big frame, but to have that length, it is just very obviously different. Is mm -hmm. this a deep board? And that's kind of my next question is there's a couple guys that I like just from what I've seen of them in person, but what, what would you say rate like the, the not just the likelihood of Penn State getting one of these guys, but the depth here that if maybe they miss on one, they can still snag somebody they really like. <laughs> Well, if you would have asked me this question last year, you know, I would have said, <laughs> yeah, you know, Evan Link, Samson, you know, a bunch of guys. Yep. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And, you know, here we are. So I don't want to hype it up more than what it is. I mean, what I would say is out of all these guys, uh, Peter Jones and Westfall are the only like top 200 guys. And again, this is a position where those top, top, top guys, those top 80 or so, you know, handful tackles, we'd say top 10 tackles, maybe. I mean, there really is a difference there. So yeah. there aren't too many of those guys on this board at the moment. Peter Jones, like I said, he's a, he's a very good offensive lineman, 6'5", 285. Is he absolutely a tackle, though? I need to go see him up close to get a better feel for that. So there is depth in the, in the, from the perspective of quality players to work with. But when it comes to those elite top-tier guys, there, are, there isn't a lot there at the moment, and uh, we'll, we'll see if Penn State's able to do that down the road. Now, there is – one elite top tier guy for interior. So sorry, T Frank, I'm taking your segue here and going to roll right into, I'm getting better at this. Maybe I should. Yeah. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Liam Andrews, <laughs> Liam Andrews is, 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 I think I, I don't want to compare him to uh, Alex Birchmeyer, but I'm going to, I mean, he's, he's, he's kind of this year's Alex Birchmeyer in the eyes of Penn state. He's not ranked as high as Birchmeyer. We have him at number 82 in the nation right now at on three. The consensus has him one twenty eight. But I think after watching him at Penn State, he was already pretty much Penn State's top interior guy coming into that camp, comes to camp and was just excellent uh, earlier this year. So Liam Andrews really feels like maybe their most important offensive lineman, even though he's 6'4", 270, probably not a true tackle. Uh, I, I definitely get the impression that he's going to be a player Penn State goes all out for. But, of course, they have Cooper Cousins committed, too. And actually, I mean, you really want to argue if, if Cooper wasn't committed, I'd probably have Cooper in that spot, right? right? So he, he and right. Andrews are kind of – one and one a there and you know what what'll be so interesting to me down the road is is does cooper continue to play center at six six three hundred because that's that's the plan right now at yeah. six six three hundred we had and this debate the other day we had this right. exact debate the other day is, yeah I, I don't know i mean uh, he bends really well it makes a lot mm -hmm. of sense i mean there's a lot that works there but you need tackles, and he certainly has some of the size there, and, and the frame is good. There, there's things that work there. So we'll see. Yeah. Let's see where he plays this season. Of course, he has two years of high school to go, so a lot of development still to be done there. But uh, Cooper is certainly a swing guy that we'll be keeping a close eye on. But uh, a couple other guys I'll just list here real quick. Jordan Seaton's been here a couple times before the St. John's College prospect. Really good player. I just I don't get the vibe that he's that interested in the Penn State. He has not been on campus for – Quite some time now. I believe it's been – is it going back to last season, I want to say? I think he came for a game last season. And just the fact that he hasn't been here since last October, and he's been to some other schools and stuff, it just kind of tells me that's not trending in the right direction. Uh, Drake Barnara from Florida did come up and camped with Penn State this year. Looked pretty good. I think he'll be a player we're talking about a good bit. Luke Hamilton from Ohio, another guy that they offered a while back. They, they, they will certainly be – uh, building a stronger relationship with him when September 1 starts and coaches can initiate that. Uh, Kyle Altooner as well from Good Council. Good Kyle's came here a couple times. Have you seen – T. Frank, were you at one of the camps with Altooner? Was yeah, there? he was at the okay. he was at the uh, Maryland camp that we went to in March. And he was – I was focused on Anthony Donko at that point, but he did stand out as one of the other guys. I think he played center, and he did a pretty good job there. So he mm -hmm. was one of the guys that stood out outside of what we were focusing on as a staff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kyle's been to Penn State twice now. Uh, I believe he came. I forget when his first visit was, but I know he camped then uh, in June. So that's a positive sign. Uh, and then, of course, Devontae Armstrong, twin brother of Deontay Armstrong. Uh, he mm -hmm. projects probably more of a more of a guard in the next level, but he just got uh, an offer this past weekend as well. So uh, some quality guys there. There's there's good. There's more that will emerge. Uh, but right now, when I when I look at those guys that Penn State has to land, Liam Andrews from Brookline, Mass, certainly mm -hmm. is one of those guys. 
Uh, then, of course, I mentioned Peter Jones, and there'll be a few others there, but Peter and, and, and Andrews feel like those top guys at the moment. So that does it for the offensive class in 2024 for Penn State of kind of the the rough out of the big board right now of the names to know. Definitely not a comprehensive list, but a good place to start for us here on the BWI Daily Edition. One last question for you, Ryan, as we get out of here, and that is taking a look at the offensive side of the board. I know we still have the defense to do later, but this cycle, Pennsylvania and the region, good, deep, talented. Yeah. yeah? Seems like it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it definitely a good year for Pennsylvania. Uh, I'd have to go through New Jersey. I, I think Maryland's kind of gets gets an uptick in this class. Uh, Maryland and New Jersey have just been so wishy-washy lately. Uh, so I'd have to go through the numbers for you. I know it's a good year in Pennsylvania. That's important. Uh, and there's some quality guys uh, in New England as well. We'll talk about maybe a little couple more on the defensive side with the, with the uh, Jacob and Jared Smith brothers. There's a couple others too. But uh, look, Penn State will get will get quality guys from the region. To, to me, what, what matters is who are those national guys from outside the region that they can pair. Mm-hmm. Penn State always gets their, their, their top guys in the region. And of course, usually – as we move on and, you know, they, they commit to Penn state, we get testing numbers for them that it, it helps uh, with the scouting process and, and getting a better picture for why some guys are underrated or where, whatever it may be. So they'll get their regional guys. It's getting that player from Texas, those three yeah. from Florida, you know, maybe someone from North Carolina, Georgia to pair with those players. Uh, that's when you go from a top 15 class to a top eight. And we'll see if they can do it. We'll see if they can hold on where they are in the class of 2023 right now. But that is obviously for another show. Ryan Snyder, Recruiting Insider for Blue White Illustrated, giving you the pulse of Penn State's class of 2024. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. Thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing, downloading, rating, reviewing, all that great stuff on social media. uh, And, of course, on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. We're heading into the season. It's here. It, we are uh, tomorrow's media day training camp is in full sque- swing. So make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and to YouTube. So you don't miss anything from blue, white illustrated. We will be back with more here 